So today I'm behind the wheel of the 2022 Toyota Tundra Capstone, and I'm going to take some time to showcase the interior of this thing. So starting as I normally do from left to right, over on the left, you've got your window switches, you've got door locks, you've got your rear mirror adjust. Tucked right here on the side, you've got different buttons you can set for the preset of the driver's seating position. Up top, you've got your door latch. To the right of that, you got a bunch of buttons. So you have the light button for the rear uh, bed. You've got the different um, buttons for the running boards to come in and out uh, automatically. Headlights, gas cap, uh, heated steering wheel, uh, dim level for the gauge cluster, for the plug in the backs, um, odometer reset and collision uh, sensors for the rear. Moving to the gauge cluster, it is a full digital display. Um, over on the left, you can switch between different pages like in many uh, Toyota vehicles. So right now it's on the uh, information screen, which will allow you to go up and down uh, for different eco screens. You've got navigation to the right, which is a compass, or if you have a destination set, it can appear here as well. Media, what you're listening to. Um, this is the trailer information screen. I don't have a trailer selected though. Bunch of settings. It can be enabled and toggled on and off messages screen and then back In the center you have the tack uh, and then it can be different color schemes will be set for the different drive modes so right now it's kind of normal comfort we'll um, have an animation showcasing what it's changing so the shocks obviously and comfort is displayed up at the top eco obviously for the engine and once that disappears kind of more blue see right here is where the drive mode also will display what you're in and then going up to sport kind of livens up the color a little bit so obviously it's mostly for the engine for sport we got sport s then sport plus toggles the engine and suspension for a more sporty setting kind of livens it up a little bit more as well Obviously over to the right, you've got the boost gauge for the iForce engine, as well as the um, hybrid battery uh, sensor right there. Moving to the back of the steering wheel, how I was adjusting everything over on the left is over here. Um, so going left, right, and then once you're on a page, going up and down. You also have back button, call, um, talk, volume knob below that. Over on the right, you've got your different cruise control options, lane assist, and the toggle for the uh, tuner of the radio. Give you a better look at the steering wheel. Behind the steering wheel is the engine start stop button as well as the trail brake down low. Then you have the nice crisp clear navigation display. So basically there are five uh, quick select buttons over on the side. So you got navigation, you got radio, phone, and then the vehicle settings. So this is where we'll kick you, but I'm currently in uh, trip information. So you got current, history, and you got different settings that you can adjust. Vehicle customize, for example, custom drive mode, how I was adjusting the drive modes before. This is where you can adjust um, the custom mode, which is powertrain can be between um, power, normal, eco, suspension, sport, normal, comfort, steering, sport, normal. But you can also adjust lights, anything else you'd like to adjust for your vehicle. Dealer info, info security, software update, and apps. Below that, you've got a big knob for your volume control and you can also power it off and then all your HVAC controls. Um, you've got heated and ventilated seats for both the driver and passenger. And over on the passenger side, there is a USB plug. Below that, you've got the trailer guide button um, which I don't have any trailer set, so it's not going to guide me, but uh, pushing this will enable a 360 view of the vehicle. So I'm currently parked up against uh, like a grassy hill and you can kind of see that on the display. You got trash control off next to that, your hazard button. Uh, this is the a manual button for the height adjustment. And then this is just the height adjustment up and down. You can kind of go between a high uh, normal setting and a low setting. And that will be displayed right there, so right now I'm in the lowest setting. If I push the manual button, you can see man dot appears, um, and the low would be blank, normal, or high. When you push this button up and down, down low below that is a charging pad and cubby hole space. 
you can see lit up that it's on. You've got the hold button, which is great for red lights. Um, you push this, put your foot on the, or you first you put your foot on the brake, push this, and you can kind of release the brake and stretch your leg at a red light, push it again. Um, once your foot is on the brake, gives you back control, the parking brake latch. From behind that, you've got your gear lever. So you got park, reverse, neutral and drive. Once you're in drive, you can hit it over and be in a sport mode. You can select your own gears up to seven, eight, nine, ten. displayed up on the cage cluster. Put it back in the park for safety. So the right of that, you got a cubby holes, which can be hidden or displayed and used. Behind the gear shifter, you have a tow haul button right here and the drive mode button, which is, this is the toggle. So this is where I was toggling everything and toggling it will display up top. So, and also display nice and crisp, clear what drive mode you're in. Then you have the four wheel drive selectors right now, obviously too high um, for four high and four low. You can just push down and go into four high before low will need neutral. So if I were just to go push down and go into four low, the vehicle's gonna get real angry, start beeping at me. So going into four high, put it in neutral, and you can go in four low. The vehicle will not get angry at you. I'm gonna put it in four high because I do not need four wheel drive at the moment. So this is uh, the armrest, which has a lot of functioning spots that you can use. So you got a little spot right here for something that's kind of not too deep. Then you can have a little spot, put your phone here if you're not charging it. Kind of opens up multiple sections. So you got USB, USB-C, you got different change ports, different height levels, uh, pass-throughs for anything you might need. It's really functional center console. And you got two cup holders in the back right here. Moving to the passenger side, you got your glove box. Give you a look at the passenger door. Design of the seats. Follows the design in the rear. You got sun shades that are built in to the doors. So I had that up for when I had my child's car seat. Both front and rear get a full uh, two part uh, sunroof. And then there's a sun shade, which I have currently open. You can kind of close it all in as if there was no um, sunroof. And all of the controls are adjusted up here. Now one functional um, item, which sometimes I forget when I'm talking about Toyotas, is obviously this is your rear view mirror. You can flip it and then you have a camera for the rear. Real simple, just flicking it, flicking the bottom latch. But that is pretty much the interior of the 2022 Toyota Tundra Capstone. If there's some feature on the interior that I didn't go in depth enough on, and you have some questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I would love to answer them for you. And if I can't, I will point you in some direction. Thanks for watching.